Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve sort colors. This is a pretty good problem. I actually really like this problem. We are given an array of nums and they give us a little bit of a description like each number, each you know value in nums is a color, but let's just skip that because I think it just kind of makes things a little bit over complicated. So let's think of it simply. We are given an array of nums n values in this array any of the values could be of three different integers each value could be a zero one or a two we want to take this array and then sort it in ascending order right so let's say this is the input array we want it to be in ascending order zeros first ones next and then twos right pretty straightforward but there's many different ways you can solve this problem with varying efficiencies and varying memory complexities so now they tell us right off the bat we can't use like a library sorting function because of course library sorting functions run in n log n time and it would just be a single function called just call sort on this array but i guess we could implement our own uh, sorting function which would also end up being n log n whether you do merge sort or i think quick sort also has the same uh, average time complexity right so we could implement our own sorting and then do it in n log n time but we can see that this problem is a little bit more simple than just a regular sorting problem because we are given only three values in the array, only three potential values. So if you've heard of the algorithm bucket sort, then right off the bat, you're going to think, yeah, this problem can be solved with bucket sort in linear time. We can sort this input array in linear time. Reason being is we know that there's only three different buckets. If the values ranged from zero to, you know, n, where n could be an arbitrarily large value, then of course we could not do this in O of n time, but we know the values are only going to be between zero and two. We can do bucket sort. Now, what is bucket sort? And how are we going to use it to solve this problem in linear time? Well, we're going to say we have three buckets, one, uh, a zero bucket, a one bucket, and a two bucket. And for each of these buckets, we're simply going to scan the input array and count how many of each of these values occur in the array. So yes, we are going to need extra memory, but really this is just going to be, let's say, a hash map or an array of size three, right? This is just going to be an array of size three. So we'll count how many twos. So we have a single two so far. We have a single zero. We have another two. So let's say the number of twos is two, then we get two ones. So yes, we have two ones and then we get another zero. So in reality, we have two of each of these values. Now we want to build the output array, but we are not gonna create a separate output array. They want us to do this in place. We can see up above. So what we're just going to do is since we know we have two zeros, let's just go at the beginning first two values, cross these out, replace them with two zeros, just like in the output array. Again, we're going to, so now we're done with the zeros portion, right? We took two zeros, put them at the beginning. Next, we know ones go right after zeros. So we're going to take these two ones, put cross, cross out these two values, right? And then add two ones right after the zeros and the exact same thing with the twos right we have two twos so that's going to make up the remaining portion of the array we can place those two twos at the end right so we're overwriting this memory so we're not actually using extra memory or anything so this is a o of n time solution and o of one solution this solution in terms of complexity is about as good as it gets but this is such a trivial solution that i'm actually going to show you the slightly more hard solution which is actually the one pass solution we can see in this case we actually did have to go through the entire input array twice once to create these buckets and then once to actually build the output array but we can technically do it with a single pass which is a slightly harder solution that's what i'm going to show you today and that's what we're going to code up so before I show you the solution, my first question to you is, have you heard of the algorithm quicksort? In particular, do you know the portion of quicksort that requires the partition algorithm? Do you know how to partition an array? For example, you know, let's, let, let's say we had an array and we wanted every single value, n value, which is less than five, to go in the left portion of the array. And if we did that, let's say we had an array of like, you know, one, two, six, seven, right? These values, we wanted the values that are less than five to go in the left portion of the array. If we did that, what does that mean? Well, that means we took these values, 
put them in the left portion of the array. Now, if we did that by swapping values around, if these two values are over here, and let's say the size of the array is four values, these original four values, if we took these and put them in the left, that means by default, these two values, which are greater than or equal to five, are gonna go in the right, in the right portion of the array by default, right? That's called partitioning an array. That's the same idea we're gonna use here. So remember how we want the zeros to go at the beginning, we want the ones to go in the middle and twos to go at the end. So let's partition the array using the same idea. We're gonna go through every single value in the array, right, in the example array, let's say, and every time we get a zero, th the way this partition algorithm works is we have a single pointer at the left, right? It's basically, we're gonna call this, let's say the left pointer, right? It's designated beginning all the way at the left. We're gonna have another pointer I, which is just gonna be running through the entire array. Anytime we get a zero value, we're gonna take that zero value, let's say it's from over here, we're gonna take that zero value, swap it with the value that's over here, right? The value that's over here is not going to be a zero, right? So for so whatever it is, maybe it's a one, maybe it's a two, either way, we're gonna swap it, put it over here, and then that zero is gonna go over here. So then once we have a zero value here, then we can take our left pointer and then shift it over here, right? Because then we know that the next time we encounter a zero, we wanna put it in this position. Now, of course, what happens if the first value by itself already is zero? Then we're gonna end up swapping it with itself, which is perfectly fine. And then we're gonna take our left pointer and then shift it here anyway. So it works out in both cases. So let's say we do that. Let's say we run through the entire array. What's our array gonna look like? Well, in this example, we'll have two zeros being at the beginning, but then we'll have the remaining portion just being some ones and twos in some arbitrary order, right? We don't know about the order of these. So we successfully partitioned the array. We got all the zeros at the beginning, right? This is one partition. Now we we still need to like partition this, right? We need to put both of these ones at the beginning and then take all the twos and put them at the end, right? But remember, if we, if we do it like this, then we are doing two passes, right? It's, it's technically allowed, but our target was to do this in a single pass. So let's maybe try to modify this partition idea. How about we take all zeros, put them here, here using our left pointer, but why not have a second pointer, which is always going to be at the right, let's call it our right pointer, and then anytime we encounter a two, we put the two over here, anytime we encounter a zero, we put the zero over here, we shift our left pointer accordingly, if we end up putting a two here, we take our right pointer and shift it accordingly to you know the next position. So this idea is definitely gonna work, but there's just one edge case we have to worry about, and let me just show you that edge case. Let's say we got to some random scenario where our left pointer is gonna be over here designating to us that everything to the left over here is already a zero, right? That's of course what the left pointer is gonna tell us if it's over here, that means everything over here is gonna be a zero, that makes sense. And our right pointer is gonna be over here here, which is going to designate to us that everything to the right of it is supposed to be a two, which makes sense. That means there was some arbitrary two that we found in the array. We moved it over here and then we took our right pointer and then shifted it by one over here, right? And every time we encounter a value, like we have our eye pointer over here, we, you know, we're gonna put this wherever it needs to go, and then we're gonna shift our eye pointer to the next position, right? But there's one thing that we have to worry about. Take a look over here. Our left pointer could be pointing at a one value, right? Because if a, if we encounter a one value, we're just gonna skip it, right? Then our eye pointer could be over here. Let's say our eye pointer is here in this example. Our left pointer, yes, could be pointing at a one, but notice how our left pointer is never going to be pointing at a two, because if it was, we would have already swapped it and put it towards the right, right? Because see how our eye pointer has already passed this position. So if it was a two, we would have already swapped it over there. Since it's not, that mean, that must mean it's always going to be a one, which is good for us. But you'll notice with the right pointer, you know, everything to the right over here is gonna be a two, but the right pointer could be pointing at a zero or it could be pointing at a one, or it could even be pointing at a two maybe, right? And if it's pointing at a zero, that's going to be a problem for us. 
Because watch what happens now. Our eye pointer is over here. We see a two. What do we do with twos? We swap it with the right position, right? So let's perform that swap. Let's cross this out, change it to a zero, cross this out, change it to a two. Then we're going to take our right pointer, shift it over here, right? Which designates to us that these this portion is going to be all twos. That's perfectly fine. And now we're also going to take our eye pointer and then shift it to the right. But now notice what we just did to our array. See how the zeros are not all the way at the left, right? We took a zero and then moved it into the middle of the array. So uh, the reason I went through this long explanation is basically to tell you is that if we take a value and swap it with the right pointer, it could potentially introduce a zero in the middle of our array, which is something we don't want to do. So in that case, if we do that, we don't want to shift our eye pointer. So what I'm saying is if we ever encounter a two value like this one, yes, we're gonna swap it with the right pointer, but in that case, we're not gonna increment our eye pointer. That's not gonna be the case if we find a zero and then swap it with the left pointer because our left pointer is only gonna be pointing at a one value. So if we take a one value and then introduce it into the middle of our array, that's perfectly fine because ones always go in the middle, but we can't take a zero and put it in the middle. That's not gonna work. So that was a pretty long explanation, but I hope that you do get the idea. The code is going to be a lot easier. So let me just run through the rest of this example. So we encounter a two. So we are going to swap it. So we're going to put the zero here. We're going to put the two over here. And then we're going to take our right pointer, shift it to be in this position. And we're not going to increment our I pointer. Of course, the left pointer is not going to be incremented. We don't have to do anything with it. But since we performed a right swap, I stays the same. So now we're going to look at, again, what value is in this I location. It's a zero. So in this case, yes, we are going to swap it in the left position. So let's do that. Let's cross this out, cross this out, uh, put the zero over here, and then put the one over here. So it's gotten pretty messy, but... Uh, ignore that. So since we performed a left swap this time, we're going to take our left pointer, increment it by one. So left is going to go over here now. And we're also going to take I and increment it by one, right, to be in uh, the next position over here, it's going to be at the one. We we don't have to do anything with a one. We don't put it in the left and we definitely don't put it in the right. Ones are just ignored. So then I is going to be incremented one more time until I is in this position. And once our I pointer surpasses our right pointer, we're done, right? Because we know that the portion to the right of the right pointer is going to be sorted anyway. It's going to be all twos, right? So now we're done. If you take a look at our uh, output array, it's a little bit messy, but let me just kind of draw this. It's it's sorted, right? Zero, zero, one, one, two, two. So let's dive into the code now. Okay, so now let's write the code. Like I said, we're gonna have two pointers, a left pointer at the beginning and a right pointer all the way at the end, which is gonna be nums, uh, length of nums minus one. And we're also gonna have a third pointer, i, which is just gonna iterate through the entire array until we exceed our right pointer. So while i is less than or equal to right, let's continue. So there's two cases we worry about if the value that we're at is either a zero or if the value that we're at is a one. So if nums of i is equal to, or maybe I said one, but if nums of i is equal to two, right? That's our right case. So in both of these cases, we're gonna perform a swap, right? Since we're doing a swap uh, in both of these cases, I don't wanna write it out, so I'm just gonna define a helper function up above. So we're gonna pass in two pointers, the indices of nums that we're gonna be swapping. So let's just get a temp value for nums of i. The reason I'm not passing nums into this function is since this function is defined inside of another function, we, are, we actually aren't required to pass in that variable. It has access to any variables outside of it. So let's get nums of i, store it in temp, and then replace nums of i with nums of j, and then do the exact same things with nums of j. We're swapping it with that temp variable, which is originally nums of i. So we're just swapping the two values at i and j. So that's gonna be helpful for us. So if i equals zero, then that means we're swapping this with the left pointer. So let's run swap on our left pointer and our i index, right? We're swapping these two values. And when we do that, we have to remember to increment our left pointer, right? By one, the else condition is if this was equal to two, in that case, we're gonna also be doing a swap, but we're gonna doing the swap with our index i and our right pointer, right? 
And if we do that, then we have to take our right pointer and decrement it by one. Now, in either case, remember, we want to increment i every single time. But remember, if we performed a right swap, we don't want to increment i. So in this case, I'm just going to say, but if we encounter a two, remember, we don't want to increment our i pointer. So in this case, I'm just going to do the opposite. I'm going to decrement i, and that's going to be canceled out by the incrementing operator right outside of it, which is going to execute every single time. So so if we encounter a one, we're not going to enter either of these conditions, but we are still going to increment our I pointer. And then outside, we don't have to return anything. We just have to modify the nums array in place, which is exactly what we did with our swap function. So this is the entire code. You can see that it's very efficient. This is the one pass solution. So I hope that you found this helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot, and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.